Hi friends! Today we're going into Pat McGrath's Utopian Dream and Fleur Fantasia. But first, if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia. Thanks so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups to get head over to my Instagram. I had a little foundation here. I don't know how it got there. Yeah, anyway, just wanted to let you know. I already have a video focusing on Mothership 9, Utopian Dream. We cover the swatches, four and a half looks, as well as comparisons. I also wanted to mention that one of you had asked about the ingredients. At the time, I was not home. I was at Bay's house. Did not have the box with me and had to wait until I returned to post those ingredients. I did so yesterday on the community board. And many of you might be wondering, why did she do this after the review? I decided to retire from from speaking on ingredients. I haven't highlighted them in quite some time and you can see that in my previous Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette reviews. I don't consider myself an expert or qualified to speak on ingredients. I think someone who is a cosmetic chemist who is in the industry more than welcome to weigh in as many of you have interest in the ingredients and that's totally cool. Also, this palette is an artistry palette. It's not labeled as an eyeshadow one because of the pressed pigments and I make those distinctions on the list on the community board and on the pinned comment down below. Once again, the pressed pigments and the ones that are not considered eye safe are Extreme Plum Noir, Cosmic Bloom, Shockwave, Blitz Extreme, and Astral Amethyst Moon. And the eyeshadows are Skin Show, Nude Ecstasy, Secret Eden, Bronze Desire, Bronze Solaris 005, and Astral Venetian Orchid. I wanted to bring it up because it might appear to some that I'm convincing you to buy the palette and then posting the ingredients after to purposely have your eyeballs explode. That's not the case. It was just a timing issue. So I hope you understand. Wanted to quickly address that. And today we're kicking off an unofficial series of combining Utopian Dream with all the other <laughs> Mothership palettes, as well as using the Intensifies Artistry Wand for a lot of other shadows in previous Motherships that like, for instance, the ones in Bronze Seduction, I can't wait to use those with this. However, I wanted to start with Fleur Fantasia because I find that these shades will just go beautifully with the palette. And I don't know if you noticed, but I painted my nails so they could be utopian dream appropriate. I'll have those polishes down below in the description box. And with all those details out the way, why don't we get a little closer? That's enough. Let's prime these lids, shall we? What should we start with first? Well, I wanted to highlight these two shades as well as, you know what? I'm gonna do a little uh, Iridescent Orchid with Cosmic Bloom. So here is Iridescent Orchid and Cosmic Bloom from Utopian Dream. You see that Cosmic Bloom is a lot warmer and Iridescent Orchid a lot cooler, which I think will look beautiful with Astral Amethyst Moon. Like, those are gonna be phenomenal. And when I was using Utopian Dream over the weekend, I realized that Cosmic Bloom reminds me of Cosmic from originally the Star Wars palette. I believe it was the um, Dark Galaxy palette. This is from Celestial Divinity, her palette from last holiday release. I'll swatch this quickly. So this is Cosmic, which is more of like a duochrome, with a very peachy gold base and a pink flip. And then next to Cosmic Bloom, I, I think these two will look phenomenal. Again, this is just Cosmic with the K. Cosmic Bloom from Utopian Dream. This is just so shiny and I usually use this as like a topper shade, but those are the two again. Cosmic is on the top, Cosmic Bloom on the bottom. Iridescent Orchid here on the top and also Lavender Blue from Fleur Fantasia. And quickly wanted to compare Lotus Paradise, which is the one matte from Fleur Fantasia to Secret Eden from Utopian Dream. Lotus Paradise is more peachy, Secret Eden a lot more rosy. And again, I love Fleur Fantasia. I dare I say this was my favorite out of all the holiday quads. I think people really love Rosé Risqué. No, sorry. Rose Risqué <laughs> making up names. Fleur Fantasia I think is limited because of the pastel hues, is lighter, but it also creates that just, again, that otherworldly feel 
that I think Pat wanted to create with Utopian Dream, but people thought it too closely related to Divine Rose 1 and 2. I get that. Someone said Midnight Sun and... I understand that Blitz Violet Orchid, when you see that shade, you immediately go to Astral Amethyst Moon and think, oh, it's the same palette. But let me pull her out. I don't think these to be the same at all. I mean, is it just me? Especially with Wicked Envy and Venom. Is Venom something? Jubilee is a super cool antique gold. And then Blood Moon. I could s I don't... Mm, Blood Moon doesn't resemble bronze solars at all Ooh, i can't wait to use blood moon with the intensifies but we want to quickly see this is blitz violet orchid beautiful shade my favorite from midnight sun and astral amethyst moon is a lot warmer or i think it's just a different color altogether it's in the same family but if you put this on top of ooh blitz violet orchid just look at that dimension it adds and i quickly wanted to see i know i started this video saying we're gonna use fleur fantasia but man i am dying to see how the intensifies can improve blood moon because blood moon it's a little chunkity chunk but it's just a beautiful color oh yes oh boy Look at blood look at blood moon now baby. I think tomorrow I'm going to focus on Midnight Sun and Utopian Dream. That's what I'm going to do. But first, let's get into Fleur Fantasia at last after like 10 minutes. Let's start off with Lotus Paradise in the crease just to see the difference between Secret Eden on the eyes. I have a new desk that I'm working on and I am so in love. It's, a, it's from Foley. It's the Jarvis moving up and down desk. It's made for smaller spaces. It's 36 inches wide, which is perfect for the dimensions of my room, but I have just been so appreciative of this desk i don't even i can't even tell you lotus paradise in the crease with my refer 15. all right looking peachy there on the crease let's follow up with secret eden shockwave could possibly look like well no shockwave i think is a lot more coral than lotus paradise secret eden surprised me the most it looks so cool and pan but it takes on a heartier rosy tone when applied on the lid. And I, I just think a perfect setup for any of the shades here in Utopian Dream. Hmm. This is giving me a little more color. Lotus Paradise, just a little lighter in the application. But we could build it up. It's all good. Iridescent Orchid, but now with Intensifies. We'll set up the lid. I think this is just... This, the glide on this pen, it makes it so easy to apply on the lid. It's like a lid lipstick. <laughs> Iridescent Orchid right on top. And man, I get if you're not interested in Utopian Dream, but you all got to get this wand. It's fantastic. And I think a game changer for those who felt they couldn't get down with the pat textures because it was just just too much using my hokoto brush here pine squirrel so it's gonna pick up a little more just to spread it out on that lid going in with more lotus paradise to widen that blend in the crease what shall we do on this side i kind of want to mix it up i'm not gonna lie because we've we've seen a lot from utopian dream for my first video so i think what i want to do is go in with lavender blue with the intensifies oh that's shiny i know i applied secret eden on the crease you might be you might be feeling worried but i'm i'm totally okay with, with what's happening back in with intensifies just on the center as i will now go in with astral amethyst just with the finger and tap it here right on the center <gasps> that is that really just bumped it up beautiful now what we can do is use extreme plum noir to add a little bit of depth here just to see what would happen going on my reference number one it's a flat fluffy brush 
just enough, I think, appropriate for me to tap first and then go in on higher towards the crease. And a little more secret Eden here on the edges. I like that. A little more intensifies here on the inner corner. Ooh, we can do the one from Fleur Fantasia, Utopia. This is why I thought Utopian Dream is gonna be an extension of Fleur Fantasia, because subconsciously I remember this name from somewhere. This is Utopia. It's like a, an opalescent, peachy based shimmer shadow. We could totally do that on the inner corner. Why not? Let's start off with that, and we could probably top it off with the Astral Venetian Orchid shade. I didn't even finish this eye. I'm like hopping around a lot. So I'm tapping a little bit of the Astral Venetian Orchid on top. That's gonna give it a little more shine. Using Extreme Plum Noir on the outer lower lash line, because I wanna add something else to the majority of the lash line here. Introduce another shade perhaps. How about Lotus Paradise here? on the lower inner part. Since it's cooler than Cosmic Bloom, I think it pairs well with Lavender Blue. Don't you think? Now we have to finish this eye. You know what I've been loving? I've been loving using Blitz Extreme as like a smoky shade, as well as Bronze Desire. But because Orchid is so cool in tone, I don't know if that'll be the good way to give. We could keep we could keep that light. Let's keep it light. How about we go in with shade as our liner is not as brown brown as black coffee, but I think it has enough shading that won't disrupt what's going on the lid, but it's gonna give us nice definition it's gonna give us a little bit of intensity on the lash line to follow up with that application using my refer number three brush to smoke it out a little bit. I'm trying to get better with my cold pencil application. Some days is gray and some days like today. Questionable, not too bad. I can't seem to just get it high enough. It's fine, I'm gonna leave it like that. What we could do is use Shockwave as our lower lash line moment. I think that'd be fun. Add a little corally corally here to the mix. And then adding some intensifies on the inner lower lash line, which I would recommend you keep a tissue nearby so you can wipe off the previous color, not get it on <laughs> what you're trying to put on. Now with Bronze Solaris, which is the toughest shade out of Utopian Dream, but when you apply on the intensifies, it makes it look melted and just applies a lot better. Why not let's go with Utopia on the inner corner here as well for this side. And why not let's go in with Lavender Blue for our highlighter. I did this when viewing these quads. Lavender Blue is so much fun to wear as a highlight because especially when you are fully committed to this pastel look, why not bring these colors onto the cheeks? And then we could use Utopia for our highlight on this side, which is definitely comes out a lot more peachy. It's hard to see up close because it's very bright outside. If I back it up, maybe you could see the color a little better. Since we already saw the blush shades from Utopian Dream in action on that video, why don't we go in with Lotus Paradise for the cheeks on this look here. Beautiful as a blush, it's peachy in tone, pairs lovely with both Lavender Blue and Iridescent Orchid. Also bring it here on the temples like get crazy. Oh, I love where this is going. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Eye looks are done. I applied a little more of lavender blue here and just some, well, mistakenly applied it here, but I kind of like what it did on my cheek. So it's gonna stay. Pat's Permagel Lip Liner in Structure as well as her Liquid Lust Liquid Lipstick in Nude Cabaret. I kind of love. And here are the eyes. I have chandelier lashes in. These are the classic charm from the bridal collection. And here is the final look combining Fleur Fantasia with Utopian Dream. I hope this provided some inspiration and these videos are not to 
make you buy Utopian Dream. It's more so if you have similar shades, either from Utopian Dream or Fleur Fantasia, maybe this would just get you in there for this pastel kind of fairy dust look which i always like to go into from time to time i think it's fun to mix it up and of course i had to combine these palettes in particular because upon seeing utopian dream for the first time online i immediately thought about fleur fantasia and just how beautifully they would combine but then briefly swatching midnight sun i think this might have to be the next matchup because it'll be quite interesting to mix the more browny, cooler shades in here with what exists in Mothership 9. That's going to be a doozy. And I'm dying to see Blood Moon on top of Intensifies on like a whole ass lid. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Get ready. With that said, fam, let me know if you have any other inspiration mashups down below. It doesn't have to be necessarily Pat McGrath. I would love to know your suggestions. If you picked up Utopian Dream, if you just got the Intensifies one, and whatever else is going on, I would love to hear. I'll see you down in the comments. But until then, fam, that is... All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Utopian Dream mashup video, monthly favorites, or lunchtime chit chat. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.